Welcome to Nuggies. In this video, we're going to set up a Windows machine to run TensorFlow without installing the CUDA drivers from NVIDIA. We're going to do it through Docker and WSL, and it's going to work great. That's the theory. So it's already set up on my desktop. It works great. So I'm over on a separate machine that I can test and destroy anytime I want to. So let's run through what's currently happening. I downloaded and installed the latest GeForce driver. This is just a normal gaming driver. This is a like an Alienware gaming laptop. The one requirement you do need to have is an NVIDIA GPU that has CUDA cores. So yeah, all you have to do is go to NVIDIA and download the driver that you need and it'll kind of walk you through the steps. I'm not actually going to cover that here. You probably already have the driver installed if you have a machine with a NVIDIA GPU. The next thing we need is we need the TensorFlow image. We're going to use the image that's provided by TensorFlow because it works great. Uh, in order to run this in a container, we're going to install Docker on Windows. But before we do that, we want to get WSL2 installed because Docker runs much better on Windows if you're using WSL2. What we're going to do is jump over to the instructions for installing WSL. And for all of the newer machines, you need to make sure that you get WSL2 and they tell you that you have to have a certain version of Windows, so let's go ahead and check for that. To check for the proper version, we're gonna check the system menu. So you just go to the start menu. Um, we'll just right click on the start menu and then up here, system. You can see down here we're running Windows 10 Pro. Uh, the Pro might be needed for virtualization. And then right here we have 19,044, and what we need is 19,041. So we're good. Our current version is higher than this, so we can continue. So we can uh, install WSL. So we just need to go to PowerShell, and it says to run it as administrator. So if you just go to the Start menu and type in PowerShell, Windows PowerShell, then you right-click it, Run as Administrator. Then WSL install, or WSL dash dash install, and then you just let this run. Okay, Ubuntu has been installed and it will set up the first time. A change will not be affected until the system is rebooted. Okay, so we're gonna have to reboot and we'll be back. One other thing to note is about the system. You wanna make sure, one, you have a NVIDIA graphics card. If you just go to your task manager with Control alt delete you can display all this information. So you, you do need an NVIDIA graphics card if you're trying to do GPU accelerated machine learning training. And then the other thing that we need to do for Docker and WSL to work well together, we need to have virtualization enabled. So if on your CPU it doesn't say virtualization enabled, you need to look up your CPU model number and make sure that it supports virtualization because it might not. And then if you have a CPU that supports virtualization but it does not say enabled here, you can enable it in your BIOS settings. So we need to reboot and then we'll be able to continue with this. And it looks like when I log back in, it's automatically installing the rest of Ubuntu. So we'll catch that in the middle of the process here. And we're back. All they want is a username. So I'm just gonna use first name here and then a password. Usually it's just password. And now you can see that we have our Linux environment set up. So now we're on Ubuntu. And of course, the first thing that you typically wanna do before installing anything is just do a sudo app install or app update and just say yes to all so that'll take a minute to update and then it's going to tell us a bunch of packages are ready for upgrade and we're going to do that and then we'll push forward so now we can upgrade okay we made it so now let's go back over to docker and we're going to install it for windows so docker desktop for windows so this is the important step we're looking for, which is use WSL2 instead of Hyper-V, and that's recommended. So we definitely want to do that. And this laptop, the fans are screaming. It's actually due to be uh, sold on eBay, but it's such a hassle to sell electronics on eBay. So if any of my viewers want me to run a giveaway for this laptop at uh, 10K subs, or <laughs> hit that subscribe button, throw a comment down there. I'll do it. If I hit 10k subs, I will give away this laptop. Because selling it on eBay is a nightmare. Here's the glorious specs one more time. It's got the nice CPU. It's got a GPU. It's like a four-year-old gaming laptop. Sick. Look at it go. Fans are screaming. It's barely even working hard. I can't imagine what doing real like ML training on a laptop would do to the poor thing. 
I guess it'd be like mining crypto on your laptop, which is a bad idea. Oh no, we have to log out to complete installation. Much better than restarting. So we'll be broadcasting again in a moment. Hey, oh, Docker pop up. Uh, whatever they're saying, I'm just going to accept. You should probably read this. Now, it, but if you're, um, Docker's not free for commercial use anymore. So if you have more than, I think, 10 million revenue is what I caught there, uh, you have to actually pay for Docker. And now Docker is starting. And it's nice that this new version defaults to WSL. Some of the older tutorials out there and older blogs and websites that you see will probably tell you to go enable it manually, but uh, that's no longer the case. And now we want to actually run this TensorFlow image and go from there. So let's go over to VS Code. Boom. Okay. So now we're running the latest version with GPUs with Jupyter and it should automatically launch the Jupyter Notebook. And now we just go here to the local host, control click this, and Jupyter Notebooks opens up. So I actually like Jupyter Lab much better. So the way that I do it is I run an installation for Jupyter Lab and then go from there. But this will actually work for now. So we have our Jupyter Notebooks running and we can just create a new notebook here. And we can go in, import TensorFlow. And then we're gonna list logical devices and you can see that we have a CPU and a GPU. So we, we're in a notebook that is being served from this container. This local host is running on a container. We specified this port in the command. Let's actually go back to that command and talk about it a little bit. And then we're gonna go and do this a better way. But this is working and you can actually start working right now, but anything you do in here will be lost because the command that we use to start this will not save your work. So let's get out of here. I like Jupyter Lab better than Notebooks, so I don't run this Jupyter image that they have. Actually, I need to stop it. Okay, so clear. Okay, so let's go over this command. So all we're doing is we're running this Docker image. This RM right here says remove the container whenever we stop running it. This port mapping here meant that port uh, 8888 on the local machine is mapped to port 8888 inside the container. Then we gave it this container access to our GPUs from our local machine. Now we ran the TensorFlow image, the latest version with GPU support and Jupyter Notebooks already installed. But I like to use Jupyter Lab and I also want to do, I want to do this in a few different ways. This is good to get you started to make sure that you can run notebooks, but this is not uh, a development environment that you want to use yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to our extensions and we're going to go to WSL. We're going to install the remote WSL. And then we can just open, we can just open a new window with WSL, um, but normally that's not gonna be available. The way to do it is to go down here to your bottom left, these little arrows, and then you can open your WSL from there. And at this point, we can close the old version, and now we're running within WSL. If we go to a terminal, we'll see that we're actually in Linux. Is we actually wanna use Docker Compose and a Docker file to build ourselves a better workflow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna code, let's, uh, let's make ourselves a, a folder here project. So we need to code a Docker file. And we're going to open that. And from here, we want to grab the image that we wanted without the regular Jupyter uh, notebooks installed because I like to use Jupyter Lab. So we're going to go from TensorFlow, TensorFlow, and then we're going to grab the latest GPU. So this is our base image. And the way these Docker files work is you're just building up layers of things that you want. And we're going to specify a working directory. I'm going to call it tfnugs because that's what I used in my repo. And we're going to copy a file from our local machine into our Docker file. So that way we can actually install the additional packages that we want. Let's go ahead and save this for now. And I'm going to jump over to that file. So let's code requirements.txt. And now there's just a few things that we need here. The number one thing I want here is Jupyter Lab. Additionally, I'll be using pandas, like I know I'll be using pandas and 
NumPy is included in somewhere in these packages as part of pandas, but I do need matplotlib. So we can save this. Now this requirements file is what we're going to use to install the Python libraries that we want when we're building our Docker container. So now we want to run a command from within our Docker co container. And we're going to do our regular pip install requirements.txt. And this is going to install all of those requirements inside of the Docker environment, or inside of the Docker container environment. And just like before, we want to expose a port for, of the container. And then we need an entry point, which is the command that will run upon our container starting. It's asking if we want the, the extensions for Docker. And I definitely am going to want whatever VS Code kind of has to offer. They have a nice environment for managing your Docker stuff. I'm going to close it because we're not using it right now. But that is what it is. So here we define our entry point, And then it's going to be JupyterLab. And each piece of the command is separated by comma and a space. You just build a list uh, to build up your command. And then we need to set our IP equal to zero because we're launching uh, Jupyter Lab from within a container. We're going to allow root. And we're going to say no browser. Because our container uh, Linux image does not have a browser. That should be good. The next thing that we want is our Docker Compose. So let's get our YAML. And this is the file that will be used by Docker Compose to build and run our environment. So version is what we choose. I'm just going to put 1.0. And then we have to define our services. And I call it Jupyter Lab because that's what I want it to run. That has nothing to do with the actual command that's being run, though. This is your name that you choose. And we want to build. The path is just going to be the current directory. And then we're going to map our ports here. And I chose 8888 again. This is the part where now we want to be able to save and access files, which we never could have done with that previous container. Uh, one, because we were removing the container as soon as we were done. And then even if you didn't remove the container right away, the layer where you're editing files does not stay between instances of running that container. So this volume will actually map it to a local folder. That way you can access your files afterwards. So we're going to use the TF nugs directory and then again it's just going to be TF nugs inside of our container. This is where it's really helpful to be inside of WSL where I mentioned that doing this in Windows is a pain. That's because of this directory service. You can't use the standard Linux directory system inside of Windows and you ha you end up having to put a full you can't use a local reference here. You have to put the full path and it has to be in Windows format and that really just kind of messes things up. And that's why I do all of this from WSL. That's the number one reason at least. There are there are other problems that you run into in Windows, but right now that that's the main reason. And then the final thing we need to do is share the GPU. Let's give it a shot. So now we can do docker compose And the first thing it's going to do is go build this, this container, which I've already done. So what this is going to give us is now we have Jupyter Lab running instead of Jupyter Notebooks, which I prefer just because I'm trying to use the new stuff. And as always, first thing you do, settings, theme, Jupyter Lab dark. It's glorious. And what we should have is the directory TF nugs. Let's just create our new notebook. Yeah, so we are inside of TF Nugs. So if you hover over this, you can see that we're inside TF Nugs. Now, when we make a notebook, we should be able to access it outside of this container whenever we're all done. So let's again, let's ensure we have our GPU. Probably get some warnings here. It's not a big deal. And I'm just going to go back up and run that again so we don't have to see the warnings. And as you can see, we do have our CPU and our GPU. 
From here, what we want to do is just save this notebook. And now all of these changes have been saved, so we can we can close out of this. And we'll come down here, Control C. It's going to stop the container and shut down Jupyter Lab. And if we go over here to our directory and open the TF Nugs folder, actually go back. Let's just open the project folder. Now we have WSL inside of a directory, just so we can see all of our files that we were working with. And now if we look in this TF Nugs, you can see we still have this notebook and we have checkpoints, even though our container is no longer running. So if we go over to the Docker app, and we can install Python here. This is just new system here. But if we go over here and look at our containers, it's exited. And we can actually go back to WSL and we can start that container again and we'll actually be able to pick up where we left off. This directory can be synced with a repo and then inside you actually sync your Docker file and your Docker Compose YAML to the GitHub repo and then the environment is tied to your project. So no matter what computer you're working on, you actually have a Docker environment that is your workspace for your project and it makes moving from machine to machine or reformatting your machine and starting clean, it makes that much easier. Let's just do one last check here. We'll go take a look and see that we have our notebook here and everything is running. We should get the warnings again. And that is it for this one. Hopefully this was helpful to get you up and running on Windows with WSL and Docker, being able to use TensorFlow and access your system's GPUs. This works for multiple GPUs as well. You just have to change your Docker Compose file a little bit. But that's it for this one. Hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos.